And we're live. Hey guys, I uh, haven't done a me, myself, and I uh, opinion video for a while or a live stream. So thank you for joining me, Malfunction, here in New Zealand. Uh, another beautiful day. It's a bit of rain and everything. Uh, it's 7 p.m. here. Um, wherever you are, welcome to the show. Uh, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, as I said, wherever you are, hope you're safe. Hope you're uh, with your family and loved ones and you're all taking care of each other and your friends and your wider community. One of the things I noticed uh, this week, I um, I have a huge problem with authority. As a kid, I learned about uh, trust and not trusting authority and those in authority. Like around about age of 10, things happened to me that I realized that uh, just people, just because people are grown up, then don't always have your best interests in heart or even not so grown up. And so um, I found myself, um, you know, growing up into my teens and so on without really, un really uh, liking those, you know, people having authority over me. And one of the things, um, you know, uh, being a young kid, I'm always, you know, trying to find friends, trying to find uh, community, trying to find people to hang out with and so on. And, and that led me into a lot of um, different religious groups and organizations and so on. And not so religious groups and so on. I've lived amongst many different people. Uh, I've lived in um, different ethnicities, different age groups. My friends have been old, young, and so on. Uh, my mentors have been old, young, and so on. Um, so one of the things uh, with this whole um, fallout from these past year or two, or maybe even long in the last five years, I've noticed how uh, people who are supposed to be liberals like really people who are supposed to be like, you know, hey, just do what you want. Just as long as you're not hurting anyone, create what you want, uh, write what you want, enjoy what you want, just as long as you're not hurting anyone. Uh, and, you know, you, you're not causing an issue for law and order and so on. And, you know, you're just doing your thing. So with The Last of Us, we noticed when the leaks came out that there was a huge fallout about how and why things were changing the way they were changing. I mean, amazing game. I, you know, I already have the game. I was interested in, in get a physical copy as such, and haven't been going around to get it yet. Um, um, and so, I'm new to gaming. I, I've I've had an Xbox for so long. I've had games, you know, gaming um, platforms and um, consoles in the house since I was a kid, from Vic 20 to Commodore 64 to Atari to PlayStation's um, Xbox and all that. So I've always games have always been around there, and I've always you know played at the arcade and stuff. But I haven't been really cool at games. It's just one of those things. I'm, you know, if it's not easy, I just bother um, because sometimes I get lost in it. And so um, recently, as I've mentioned, that I've been um, playing a lot of uh, a lot of um, visual novels, and I'm interested in actually creating a visual novel in the next few years. Uh, but one thing I really worry about is the idea that. Uh, that people get themselves into these communities and or create even develop games who go, go out and make these amazing games and when the culture changes and this is a thing that's really worrying to me as someone who's a creative person who creates everything from foam artwork to ceramic sculptures to uh to digital art to drawing with pencil to painting to oil painting i've done a lot of work because I've studied art and stuff and you know as well as uh, the visual medium of filmmaking and stuff and so I find that the idea where you have people who should understand that let and let let people just create what they want to create and enjoy it and if people enjoy it all the better and then they'll put their money into it and they'll put their uh, you know they even make go out and create their own you know be inspired by it one thing I really uh, think is really worrisome is when people and who do these artworks this they think that they are role models somehow that they were actually somehow the um, upper moral high ground to tell people beneath them or people that enjoy their work who've spent hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars as some people who enjoy this work to then say hey now i need to tell you what's good for you or that i am now going to make these things as role models nobody in their right mind thinks of games as role models seriously when 
where does the idea in your head come from that you as a creative person are a role model? You're not. I'm not a role model. I never want to be a role model. Hey, I'd like to say good things and like, inspire people. That's as far as I go. I am not a role model. And nothing I create, I want, I'd like to, to inspire you as a creator or enjoy it, but never to say this is how you should live your life. And this is the artwork you should be paying attention to because then you could actually be a better person. That's not what art is about. Art is about enjoyment, communicating. One of my teachers, as I've always said before, uh, Chris Kelly, uh, Kerry, amazing um, um, New Zealand artist, uh, ceramic sculpture, uh, amazing guy, right? He actually learned his, um, his skill in Japan, right? He learned how to do ceramics in Japan and was able to come and teach us here in New Zealand after having learned it. So art goes across boundaries, across cultures, across communities. Uh, when I was doing my ceramic work, my mom said that, hey, she knew a person when she was younger, and the only person she ever knew that did pottery. You know? And she says, you know, it's amazing to have you as my son actually doing pottery, like ceramic. And like, maybe somewhere while you had me in your stomach, uh, you know, you were watching this guy do it and somehow something got into my brain through, you know, through your nurturing that art was something I want to do. And here I am, you know, 47 years later, or at that time I was about 22, something like that, 21. And, you know, that I'm here um, doing this work. One thing about art is that it's just such a beautiful way to tell stories and, you know, or tell what, and like I said, it's about communication. It's about how to say, hey, this is what I've created. Hopefully you enjoy it. And um, if you enjoy it enough, you might buy it. And because I do so many different things, I'm multi-talented, um, skilled, whatever, uh, I use a lot of different uh, tools and uh, materials for to make my art. And the, and the idea behind that is that I don't think that not everybody has that, right? And I don't expect everybody to have that. But myself personally, I just like to do things and I like to keep busy. And when I'm not, I get bored and I just do, you know, spend hours and hours playing games, right? Or reading books and stuff. But even that, I use it as inspiration. I don't use it as a role model. I don't, you know, when I was a kid, I thought I could fly and I broke my front teeth, right? I wanted to be Superman. So when you're a child, that's fine, you know? Hey, you know, you want to, you know, some things, you know, you get up, get up, you wise up, you know, no, you, you can't, you can't actually fight, dude, right? But the idea is that when people start going on about um, changing the game, once they get the first good product out, they decide that they know, oh, oh, uh, somebody's come across and said to me on Twitter that uh, does these things don't look the way they are. And that, then they start baiting and switching. What happens is when someone tells you, that what they're doing or what you're doing isn't meeting the mark or isn't the way they want it to see, you can either go two ways. You can go, yeah, I'll take that under advisement, which is what my tutors always told me. Take it under, say, say, say thanks for your uh, opinion on your view. I'll take it under advisement and you carry on doing that. And later on, you might think, yeah, no, yeah, no. You know, maybe some things might work a bit better or not. Other times you just fall under the, you know, fall to their um, criticism or whatever, because usually it's not about critique. And, and we discussed this uh, with uh, with Megan the other day about criticism and critique was a difference in that. Check out that video, that's a really good video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that discussion. She's an amazing person, amazing, amazing person. You know, and, um, and I've talked to other people in the art about why they're inspired to do what they do. And the other way you can go, the third way, is that you basically bow to them. You a second, that's the second way, sorry, you bow to them. Sec, first way, you take it an advisement and you just go, yeah, I'll think about it. First way, the second way is you bow to what they say. You just give up everything you, you wanted to do. You just go, I wanted to do it this way, but now these guys are hounding me on Twitter, on social media, so now I'm gonna change it. So you bow to them. I call that a cuck. And it's, you know, it's basically being a cuck. It's basically not having a backbone. That's my third, you know, that's basically what it is. Not having a backbone and standing by your creation. And the idea is if you stand by your creation, you'll actually end up finding you more people that actually enjoy your work. You'll find people that spend more money on your work, that they'll stand by you, they will appreciate you, that you will, you will get a better audience for your product because it already has a global reach, right? Especially with The Last of Us. So 
And the third way is you just buckle up. You don't buckle up, you buck up. You go, yeah, you know, thanks. Thanks for your advisement. Cheers. I hope you enjoy the first one and hopefully you enjoy the next one. I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm doing. I'm going to have a backbone. And in this climate of cultural uh, virtue signaling, uh, race baiting, uh, people who say they're not racist actually come out as racist, which is what I find really interesting is when people say, hey, that looks, you know, I was listening to a podcast before on YouTube where the guy goes, it looks more Japanese now. And it's like talking about a mango anime, weird, right? So you can see in, the, in themselves that they actually are, they pretend not to be racist, but they actually are. Uh, and one thing, uh, and the other thing is I find that like, the changing of characters is very interesting because when you have somebody, you know, if you have a character or a idea and you as a creator are creating something and people love it, they love it and they're waiting for the next one and you buckle under and you change and you go, oh, because I'm, I've realized over time that I've done this and this. Rather than leaving that thing the way it is and letting your, your creators just create that and carry on with The Last of Us and do the best thing that you've done ever, the way it was and not changing it just the story's a bit different you just do that instead you go out on stage and you go hey <laughs> i've been talking to some people and they've been telling me that uh my characters are you know uh misogynist you know but the word about that is that they don't really wonder when it comes to misandry and this is what really really annoys me the hypocrisy of it all is that you're allowed to do whatever you want to a male character, anything, and nobody will get out there on Twitter and start you know, attacking you over it or whatever, canceling you out. But as soon as you do something about a female, they'll be on your case. And that's hypocrisy, it's double standard. I hate that in myself, I hate that in other people. I dislike that, I despise that. I think it's just pandering. It's the worst form of virtue signaling you can get is when you discount one thing and you raise up another thing. I love balance. I think balance is the best way. If you're gonna, if you're gonna talk about one thing in a bad way, you talk about the other thing in a bad way as well. Or you talk about good thing one way, you talk about the, good, the other thing in a good way as well. You, the one, the other thing is that they all they, these these new characters they try to change. They make them look like more like guys. They no longer have to. They never look buxom. They don't ever look like proper female form. Uh, they they're like straight up and down. There's you know like rectangular shapes. There's no sort of um, figure or form to it. They don't understand history of art. They don't understand that way back when. Um, I think um, I can't remember um, one of the beautiful um, sculptures that has survived centuries. Uh, where as a pregnant woman, very buxom, very big waisted, and that was one of the first forms of sculpture that we've actually seen. And there's many more, but there's one of the ones that I remember very well when we were studying art at school, you know, and um, in art school, I should say. And so these they start pandering. They say have written, you know, especially this guy Druckmann with uh, Last of Us. You know, he talks about and I posted the video. You've seen the. Um, um, uh, just some guy did an amazing uh, counter video to that. He's just amazing when it comes to editing. Um, and, you know, and the guy gets up on stage like, oh, I, you know, I didn't realize this was such a, such a big deal. It's like, where is your backbone as a man? And same thing, where's your backbone as a woman to just go, hey, dude, uh, my figure doesn't look like a boy. You know, my figure... It looks like a woman and I enjoy my figure as a woman. Why are you casting these characters and changing them to look like something they're not? When And, and the bait and switch is what annoys me. Um, I understand uh, taking um, your creations and you're changing them, but not after you've already, I mean, I don't mind, I don't mind costume changes and all that, but the actual figure of a character, right? Haircuts are fine. But when you try to actually change the way a person looks physically, when some when it's been accepted and enjoyed and people are enjoying it, nobody's out there going, you know, it'll be better if she looked like a man. Because that and that mindset doesn't really I don't know what sort of mindset you gotta to have to be able to do that, to think like that. It's not real. Um, the other thing is that these folk that think like that, they're zealots, they're religious zealots of their, of their own puritical standing. They think they have the moral high ground to teach and preach at people. And, and 
in a liberal moral um, um, Western society, right? And most of these games are enjoyed all over the world. They're not just in the West because people play games and they enjoy games and they love games. And I think the idea that you can basically start preaching from your pulpit at a game convention or a game thing release isn't what you do. You want to do that? Join a religion, right? Do that in a in a place where they accept you. They what your ideas are. What I find really amusing is that people in the crowd were clapping when he was talking about this, and and I, I find that really really weird that people in the crowd who enjoy these games were clapping about this these horrible changes, this this uh, zealotry of from like the from the gaming stage of the release and talking about how th we're going to do this because we think that young boys are getting the wrong idea. It's like uh, all the young boys are doing, I want to play this for a couple hours and I'm going to wait for the next game to come across. And not only young boys, young girls play this or older boys, older, whatever, right? Everybody plays this game, right? Within that age limit. The other thing I find interesting is that this guy is in a, such a bubble with his close friends is that he doesn't understand society as large. You can go right now on Instagram and see all these characters, uh, well rounded figures, whatever, females in their amazing cosplay. I enjoy cosplay. Um, right now we're having an incredible cosplay done by one of my friends. It's on Instagram. She's um, just going to be loading it up and, you know, she's designing it herself, um, you know, making it all up herself. And I just, I'm waiting to see this amazing character. Now, that's an age limit character. It's a PG character. So I'm not going to try to make it, you know, uh, you know, and that sort of uh, try to make it for, for older groups because that character is made specially for that age group. Now, the idea behind it is that people aren't cosplaying these characters who are not square pegs, right? Who are not rectangle shapes. is hilarious to me because all you need to do is go on to Instagram and on Twitter, look at this amazing... Uh, people who make a living out of just doing cosplay, right? Hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just making a living at going to conventions, winning um, prizes, winning awards, being able to travel all over the world. I know a friend who won an award uh, for one of her cosplays and she was able to go to another country, right? And that's what I enjoy hearing these stories because I know in, in, uh, in pop culture, there's very different fashions and some people find it a, a very um, healing, right? Healing for them. And, uh, you know, they find um, friends who are similar mind. They don't feel like they're stuck, uh, you know, in their own little world anymore. They're able to appreciate and join other people like-minded and enjoy that. But then if you have these people like this guy, Druckmann, coming on across, if I remember his name right, from Last of Us, and trying to preach, saying, oh, that's wrong. This character wasn't supposed to be like this. I made a mistake. And it's like, I, where's your backbone? Nobody told you to do this. The only people that would have told you to do this who are trying to change what everybody enjoys to make their own. Try to get in with you, right? Get in on the back of your hard work. And this is what I don't like. Uh, next up, right? Is the fact that people will try to change things or say things because they want a hot take from it or they want followers from it, or they want their own little book they can write about it, or they want their own little game they can get out of it, or they can write a, you know, um, go and write comic books and get deal comic book deals and stuff. And I've seen this happening. Whenever people start doing this, they have a gender at the back of their mind that if I, if I, if I get like, if I tag somebody on Twitter, next thing I know, I'll have a lot more followers and then I will start to have more people coming and look at my work and so on. It's very easy, right? It's the same thing when, uh, when people start wearing really risque stuff and cosplaying because they're trying to get more hot, um, more um, likes, more retweets out of it, so so on. The idea that that you can bait and switch on people is wrong. I've been in, I've been in sales for over a decade, um, you know, when I used to work full-time and part-time and so on in retail. I understand bait and sell. Nobody likes to be bait and switched, right? They don't, they, they come to see, okay, we got Last of Us coming up. And next thing you know, you get all pandering, all this rubbish, that political virtue signaling, the woke media, media sort of stuff going on. And like, 
backtracking on what you've already done. And one of the things I've said to one of my artists is like, I'm going to be doing some, you know, very political stuff on one of our projects. And all I want out of you is to stand by that. That's all. Uh, because otherwise, I'm just going to be going, yeah, I don't think we'd be working together, kind of thing. But that's not, because that's the thing. So if you're going to be working with someone and they have a different political stance on something that you're doing, well, it doesn't pay off because what you're trying to aim for as an artist, as a writer, as a creator, you want to make sure that the best work that comes out is what you're trying to put out, that it, it matches what you're doing. So The Last of Us 2 is a joke, right? Because of this guy uh, pandering uh, a gender motives, he's a freaking religious nut. As far as I can see it now, he's a religious puritanical nut who's trying to preach to everybody who plays the game that they should not be enjoying it anymore. They should be thinking about how these characters are role models. They're not role models. They're just characters. They're 2D, 2D 3D characters on a piece of paper or a digital medium, right? That's all they are. They're not real. They're just fake, fake, fake. They're just there to be enjoyed and enjoyed and played with, but they're not real. But People enjoy them, and they're following. People dress up as them. They have communities around them. They write down fan fiction. They draw their artwork, and they hang out with people that enjoy them. So for them, this guy to basically do that, you know, and not have a backbone. This is the thing about have, being an artist is you got to have a backbone. you got to enjoy what you, well, you know, you got to create what you like. you got to enjoy it. you got to have a passion for it. And if you have a passion for something, and it's to a standard that people think is good, that's all that matters. But you've put all your 100% effort in it, and you've learned the skills, you've, you know you know your trade, and you're putting it out there, that's all that matters. People enjoy seeing people with passion. If you don't enjoy something, people will know you're not liking it. And as far as I can see, this guy, he did not enjoy making this game. Because while he was doing it, you know, messing around with it, he had so many people in his ear. When you have so many people in your ear when you're creating stuff, too many cooks ruin the soup. You can't have too many cooks in the kitchen. If, if you're a writer, uh, if you're co-writing with someone, you work with that person, and they're supposed to have the same thing as you do and uh, ideas to help you make a, the best product you can. Uh, editors work well with that. Usually, well, myself, I just kind of basically, as, an, uh, as a writer, I just write what I write, and then if some, you know, if there's mistakes, I'll go back and correct it, I'll do a second draft, third draft, and try to do my best. And and the thing is, because I work with so many people, I want to make sure they put out their best quality of work as well. I won't put, you know, include their work in what I'm doing unless I'm happy with what they're doing. And because at the, at the end, it's the end result that matters, that everybody gets to enjoy and see the passion that you're doing. And if people will always see hypocrisy, and children are the, are the greatest at that. Uh, and like I said, going right back to saying, I, like early on, I learned what hypocrisy was um, through being part of different religions, um, being um, an, people with an authority over me, uh, myself being an authority over other people. I learned, you know, that certain things you just got to have a backbone about. You can't bend over to everybody. Uh, you can listen to them and you can say, I'll take it on an advisement, as I said, but you can't be a cut and bend over backwards. You got to have a backbone and belief in what you're doing. And especially if it's a multi-million dollar game that everybody's always spent their money and they're looking forward to. So art, it's always going to be subjective. But you can't bend over to people and you can't listen to the wrong voices. you got to listen to the voices and say, make it better, not change it. Changing it is a different thing to making it better. So it's different between criticism and critique. And like I said, um, the Megan um, Dickinson interview, uh, just um, live stream, check it out. That's a good one about art and stuff. And also the one with um, Seven, when we discussed that, and hey, I try to get as many good videos, as um, good interviews as I can, and put out as many good videos as possible. So that's all for me. It's a bit of a long one. Um, hopefully um, you didn't get bored. Uh, if you like this video and if you're on uh, um, YouTube, please like, subscribe. Um, I usually don't do that enough, but... Um, it's just not only to say you know, like and subscribe, but hey, if you enjoyed the video, if you like and subscribe, please do. And um, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys hanging out. And um, from all of us in New Zealand, safe safe journeys. Be safe wherever you are. Take care of yourself. Take care of your families. Kakite anō. We'll see you next time.